Yeah, non-duality. Um, some people, I mean, everything, everybody's looking for something from this, mostly end of suffering, except some people are not looking for anything because they're already awake. <laughs> I see. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, the end of seeking, or if you've been lucky enough that this shift, to put it that way, happens without seeking, because you can be kind of held hostage to that for a long time. And there's probably whatever's brought you to that point as well is interesting as well, because, you know, there's a kind of faith or a, that there is something to this, like, because in my own case, if anybody had said to me that there is such a thing as peace or I didn't I couldn't have conceived of anything beyond thought anything beyond mind at all um, because obviously it's beyond understanding so but the essence that all of this is love and I think that's that's the beauty of it that's the heart of it that's the heart of what this is, because the end is the end of the end of you, the end of the individual seeking in time is is that that's the end of the boundary, all boundaries. Um, <coughs> so it's It's a, it's a freedom from from seeking from from that restlessness from so sort of coming home to to where you are and so people have glimpses of this and they can be very big massive and uh, but the living of this is is. You know, it doesn't. It's no continuation in a sense. It's just, it's just the eternal, eternity. So it's just ever present. So everything is seen clearly. It's a, chi a childlike state of wonder. Basically, it's a return to that. And. the end of ideals, the end of hopes, the end of dreams, everything collapses in that time, space, here, there, so, and it affects the senses as well, so stillness is seen, um, seen that there's no one who could do everything about the predicament as well so there's no way to bring this about so it's seen that everything's just arising for no one that everything and nothing But nothing that's said about this can capture it at all or ever come close to it because it's just seeing the beauty in everything. And so it's kind of heaven on earth, if you like, but it becomes more normal all the time. So. But whatever arises is kind of accepted it's all just even suffering when it does come there's nothing to hook on to that but it's 
it's just well why shouldn't it be there there's nothing that's shouldn't be there like it's with the biggest collapse it's just inner and outer there's no center to the experience um, Some people remember very clearly having been like that as a child, just having access to that this sort of dark cloud of identification coming down, this sort of sense of, you know, really solid sense that you get of this inner thing looking out, the world out there, which is to be negotiated and, you know, and the mind at the centre of that, which is always divisive, it's always causing problems. Well, like, it certainly, well, some people have camera minds and others. This creates space. If not, if it doesn't completely blast the mind, it certainly creates space in it. And there tends to be more creative thought afterwards. It doesn't have the same sting. And So yeah, there's an in loveness with everything. Objects. <laughs> it's the simplest thing. It's just seeing. Just mesmerizing in a sense. Like so you can stay fascinated for a long time. And then you can come back as well, like not come back to identification, but come back into life. Or some people feel find themselves quite stuck without a <coughs> kind of rudderless. I mean, that can happen as well because motivation could t completely go in this and nothing because it's everything seems kind of equivalent in the sense that one thing <laughs> not better than another thing. A lot of people lose drive because there's no personal will and sometimes it seems like maybe something impersonal comes in and you feel yourself moved or desire can arise of course um, but not in the sense of looking for fulfillment because um, this is a kind of fulfillment it's very embryonic in that sense of just like in utero just everything all needs being met that's initially certainly in the honeymoon period that's how it feels it's just feels like being held being safe and being loved and loving and you know um Emotions can they can be a, a lot. The emotions can die down, or some people feel like it's almost like a neutrality, um, which is again like relates to the motivation, I suppose. Um, excitement maybe dies down. Metaphysical desire, desire for prestige, for status, seems kind of, unless you're a awake narcissist, <laughs> really, kind of not really important. Um, Can there be awake narcissists? Well, some of the Indian gurus, they behave like this. I mean, you could like they are narcissists, but they have claim awakening. I, th <laughs> I, th I think <laughs> so. I think so. I mean, you could say, well, are they awake or whatever? But yeah, I mean, that's personality. Because the character doesn't go away 
after the awakening you don't just become neutral is that still playing out well if you're talking about someone who's di di um, you know, diagnosed like or could be diagnosed NPD then we having a little bit narcissistic well everybody's got a bit of it like sitting up here is quite narcissistic so like everybody's got a bit I mean to, to even you know yeah, there, there's healthy narcissism, although some people yeah, would be, some people would be skeptical of that as well. But if you've got something like NPD, then power is the only thing you're interested in. Love, love doesn't figure in it. Um, so I guess the boundary could be gone. There could be intimacy with life, but still a desire for power. Um, I mean, it plays out. We see it. Yeah, okay. we see it all the time. But they they pretend that they're sannyasis, but they have. Uh, relationships with the disabled girls. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> there is. That's what. Yeah, I mean that's why. Yeah, this is this is great. It's but it's just like, I think. They still wear orange. What well, was the point? Yeah. They, didn't, they don't have to wear orange. They can just say, "Okay, I'm human as well." But right. instead, they just create this this organization around them that serves them as the gurus but and they pretend that they are celibate when they not what is the point in, in that but they, they I think they are enlightened because they give experience to people of, of like bliss and all of it well maybe this is the devotion of the person that comes to them rather than his powers but um, having this question sometimes it doesn't make you into a good person <laughs> necessarily although in some cases it's unless why it's so difficult to universalize because yeah I mean I have seen it with people who are empath like and I'm sort of thinking of the couple I know who are empaths who are awake and they're really beautiful people. Like mm -hmm. from what I know, I don't know them to live with them or anything like that. And I think, wow, like really compassionate. Like really. I think she's so soft, <laughs> so she soft doing it? and so like <laughs> angel. Like, but there are others that are different. Well, anyone could put that Everybody's on as well. Different. I mean, like narcissists can come across as really sweet and like so you really just oh, don't. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's not. It's not about the personality in that sense. If if the personality has been kind of okay, like in my case, I was so, I saw I I was kind of relatively normally defended, but I became very defended for a period of ten years, really defended. So, like, so for me, it was like ripping. It ripped all those defenses away. Suddenly, I wasn't, but less than I'd ever been. So, it's quite a shock. So if you don't have strong boundaries before this happens. You can be vulnerable to narcissists, like you can be more vulnerable in some senses because, you know, because you're projecting love, you're projecting, <coughs> if you're a piece in here, you, you might be projecting it out there as well, like particularly, particularly if you meet other people who are awake and you don't really understand the nature of personality, you can think, Oh, this person is awake, so they must be like me. They must be really peaceful. <laughs> Bullshit. They may be in a really bad mood, twenty four seven. Probably you not know, like. Yeah. So it's no. So it's not. It's definitely not about the the personality. That's you, you can never know that, and not unless you live with someone. It, I don't think you can. But I, I'd have a good guess. I, th I think they're. All, I think. I mean. I mean, I've seen it. Some some people seem incredibly compassionate, and incre you know, um, yeah. So, do you know the book The Play of Consciousness? I think. Oh, that was Muktananda, wasn't it? Yeah, he said, or oh, maybe I'm wrong. That uh, when he became enlightened, he still had to have some time to lose the he called it Vasanas, the imprints, because he was really rude to the people that cooked for him and all these mothers, he said. 
that looked after him. Um, so that's interesting because one might think that this could all fall apart after the realization, but no, he was kind of awakened, but in the same time he had this vasanas, this these behaviors that were not very, very nice to others, which is interesting. Like I'm just saying this, inter it's interesting. It's not all bliss and being in love and you know touching people's heads and they all with the bats flying around their heads immediately. It's not like this. It's just the humanity in that all awakening is very very interesting. Well, it could be the other way around as well. It could be. Yeah. Really compassionate and blissful, and suddenly you're very wealthy. Yeah, I'm got <laughs> <all> <laughs> <of> <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm very quiet and safe. Yeah, because because you're not suppressing anything. <laughs> yeah, and and desire is contagious. So yeah, I mean, but the, you know, so it's funny that people who some people want to grow and uh, and want to keep deepening in this if. It's a way of putting it, I don't know, but it's like, because you've got suddenly access to see much more, you're more aware of your internal state, it's like what's in a sense of like, you know, because there's so much, there's much more space in you, you can kind of see what's going on, I, I, you know, because you're in, in a more mindful state as well, you're more accurately interpreting the emotions of other people, though that's kind of mm -hmm. been studied, so you kind of more so you, you you're aware of all the much more aware of the darkness and the light in you and cause it's so you know it may not be acted out so much it, it, it depends but that's a different thing psychology it really is um but then you get yeah and people tend to want to change their lives in certain ways very often more sociable jobs maybe helping i don't know help helping professions and stuff like that or um do you agree that's like a mass awakening is is a way to help humanity. You know, it's it, our only hope if there's a lot more awakening in human beings. Well, then again, it comes back to the personality thing. I th I think um, because uh, you know that whole Jiddu Krishna Murti, anything that's created by thoughts, you know, it, it can only create division. It can never create anything good. But I I think that's untrue, and I think there's there are people out there who've got a much better grasp of the situation, people like Daniel Schmachtenberger or people who can almost like get a bigger picture of what we're in and what mechanisms are at work, like the mechanisms of desire, of rivalry that characterize society and stuff like that. And I don't think you need to be awake to, if you're really empathic, I think that's enough. People. And I think people who are like philosophers, is something that's vocational like that, their kick is about understanding something more, understanding something more. Like it's not about money or it's it's very direct. I think people like that can be trusted more, and I think people who are empaths can be trusted more. And somebody who's awake and empathic, definitely. But it it would definitely if it is all mass for sure, because everybody's going to be lifted a bit. You know, would it be the same if people became a bit more, um, if their like, emotional intelligence quota was was raised? That would be fantastic because if you're awake, you can still be hijacked by a narcissist who will use you for their ends, and that's never going to be good. Um, so, like, it's a really complex question, mm -hmm. um, and I think we're a bit naive. It's another ideal as well. But for sure, it doesn't take many, uh, but I think it would, because, uh, yeah, I don't know. But it takes a 
something. We need something pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, st sitting up at the top of a mountain isn't going to help, that's for sure. But what do you, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Sorry. coughs> uh, about what? <laughs> if if everybody woke up on mass, like the whole, if it, what difference it would make to society? Uh, I mean, there's there, there's no. There's no awakening. There's no enlightenment. It's just, it's just already is. It's just. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. I have an idea. Because people who are not awakened, they are caught up in too many thoughts because of the system of their beliefs and the belief is like a hook that hooks the other like an empath and narcissist having this dance because of their beliefs matching each other so imagine if then we would question all the beliefs that we have um, and then turn it around and say what would happen if I didn't think this way I question all the beliefs there's a lot of it if you think about it on many levels the relationships the, the, the different areas of life we have beliefs that we think something about the life and the different areas of life and then you can just turn it around and say, what would I, what would it be if I didn't think this way? Well, that you need space so you imagine, to yeah. So that would be possibly the answer how the world would look like when everybody would have at least questioned their beliefs and their thoughts. But it's more the identification. I mean, people, pe Everyone has beliefs, don't they? Yeah, but then if you don't attach to it and then question it, then give it a space for this to be more free. So you're not that attached when you question it. But in a way, like either you have that space or you don't. I mean, some people are some people are very rigid on. I mean, you can't really negotiate that. I mean, you'd have to do lots of work, like literally pages and pages. Uh, of of work about beliefs, and then let's say it's only, the beliefs. But it's only really the core belief, isn't it? That that this is solid, this is real. Mm. You know. You question good and, and bad that, beliefs. That tree must have a root, like a trunk, and you deal with the trunk yeah, rather usually than in fear. every branch on the tree. Usually in fear. Because you're not going to get when people a lot of people have political beliefs, you know, wake or not, like they'll have really really strong. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the difference. Is that a bad, you know, it's not always yeah, bad. What do you think the outcome would be if everyone were to drop well, their beliefs? Let's say we're doing this exercise where you write your belief, I should not be here, let's say. And then you write the um, examples to support these beliefs because I think I'm not enough, because uh, I experienced this in my childhood and, and my parents have shown me that I should not have enough, and etc. There's a lot of it and the, the, the um, proofs for the belief can give you another belief that you can also question but then the third step is what would I do if I didn't think this way? And the fourth step is to flip the belief to the opposite. And this is Byron Katie. Mm. A little bit, yeah. A not little not bit. for an obsessive. But not I wish I could be there all but, day. But what's, the, what's so the end result? Once you've done all of that, then... then it gives then you uh, like a perspective that you are very transparent. 
<laughs> and you think like, wow, uh, it's, it's like more ton, uh, mm. this guy Tony Parsons, I think, it's like there is nothing, like nothing. Mm. You you nothing others you don't judge people or you you read more lighter and you don't judge yourself or others and there's more space for everything that everything that is happening is neutral we give the meaning to it yeah it's something else something else so what do you what do you imagine a world would be like if everyone was in that space what's what's the end product oh, I have to Think about this. Because <laughs> it sounds like you're invested, like you like you believe it's good. You believe um, it would be a good thing. It would be better for sure because I can see from my mini world uh, that it helps me mm. in my micro world. So it could be like as a fractal expand to a macro scale, and probably it would help. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it is a work. It's a work. Uh, pages and pages and pages of questioning yourself, and it's like se se uh, self inquiry, but on another level. Hmm. Yeah. What were you gonna say? Well, I was gonna say something. Go on. Here we go. Okay. Um, I, I guess like that. That's all. Like story. Um, this is like, it's not conceivable, it's like the way that we believe and think things is like based on sort of sequential, like it's just logic, but it's only logic that like on a human scale, so we can't really understand what this is, it's just is, mm -hmm. so it's not something that we can do to achieve this, it's just as as you know a person it's just like um it's just like <coughs> it's more like just a relaxation yeah it's all about uh, living with the light load i guess um uh, yeah the, what there never really was a person it's just stories that yeah. just kind of arise yeah, exactly but it's sto you can't say just stories because you have to get really into it otherwise it's just a theory and you would leave from the automatic stories all the time how did it happen to you were you a seeker or did it spontaneously uh, happen? i mean it really it never really happened it's, yeah it's just um uh i, I get well in, in in the story of me it's like um i had a lot of beliefs and I very much believed in um, stuff like my life and that and all the things that happened and all the sort of logical s uh, stories and news and um, yeah, my idea of the world but it's more of an unknowing so it's more of a recognition that this is everything um that your experience or uh, I, I mean there's no time right so it's like um when we talk when like usually when people talk about experience they talk about stuff that happened right so it's like something that happened yesterday right but that never happened because there's no time it's just the simplicity of this. So Did it happen gradually to you, or uh, suddenly? Uh, so that that question comes from the assumption that something happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so within a, a story, uh, it's not really like, and. It's not really an accurate sort of thing to say that I did some stuff in order to whatever, like... No, I'm just asking if it happened to you suddenly or gradually. And who is this going to happen to? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a, a that, that, that's, that's... Was there a change in you or did, were you born like this? Oh, that's a really good question. We <laughs> I could ask 
<laughs> what have you been here? But like you, you see, like it's, it seems like a gradual thing to you. I know you, you wouldn't say it like that, but in the story of time, it seems like it's been a gradual. Is that fair to say? Is it? Uh, <coughs> uh, or maybe a coming to terms with or something. I don't know. It's, it's what. Uh, um. Yeah, I don't know how to answer that. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. How do you manage daily life? It's so automatic. Like, you know, the usual kind of stuff happens, right? You know, the usual kind of understanding of the world that happens, yeah. Right. I'm, I'm just answering the question in, in relation to what this is. But your question is about something must have happened, right? And nothing has ever happened, nothing is happening, this is everything. Well, is it are you this? Like you are this? Well, no, no, I'm, I'm asking you what, what your perspective is. Do you, are you, are you and this one and the same? <laughs> Sometimes it's sudden, and sometimes they don't seem to be able to talk about it, and sometimes they can. Some, pe some, pe some people can explain it in words, in, in a way that's understandable. Yeah. What's your experience or your point of curiosity? I would like it to happen to me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm suffering, and I'm I would like it to, to stop. Are you sure it hasn't already? There is basically no me in the first place. The me is like a belief system. Yeah, belief system. Yeah. Well, it's so, more than a belief system to me. It's an experience, and the, the, the yeah, me yeah, and all that yeah. Me stuff. yeah, it's more than a belief system. Really, it's quite energetic. Mm. It's it's a full on feeling that the body is real and all that, mm. which you know I think I probably still have. Like, I, I think I'm not whatever you guys are trying to say. How long have you been in touch with that sense? Has it been consistent throughout your life, or is it something you've come to? Good luck for getting an answer to that one. Really? I don't know what the question is. So you're saying I I done a bunch of stuff? No, 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 no. Not about what happened, but this sense so, so. that you're in in touch. You said that you described it as being a sense in the body, or how long have you been in touch with that sense? Of being a me in a body and all yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it probably, probably, it might probably, probably sort of got more so when I was like a teenager and that. Mm. When I was, I guess, when I was growing in identity and all that jazz. Right. I guess when I was a kid, it was like less of that stuff really going on. Um, but the more your, let's call it real world identity, the more your human identity grew. That was when when you kind of felt more of the connection to what you call this? When my human identity grew. Well, yeah, as it gets bigger, right? You start off and you're a very simple story. You, get, you know, my name's Dave and I'm seven and I like football. And that's about all I know about me in the world right now. But by the time I'm 27, the story is much more complex. I have a whole bunch of things that and I And then you think you are enlightened like Andrew Cohen and, collect, uh, and create a cult <laughs> and people would become uh, aware of it and say, hold on a second, 
you created a cult and you abused us and uh, he would admit that yeah actually he forgot that he started acting from ego that's really and he said sorry and he did it all he over again he apologized <laughs> <laughs> and everybody really went oh that's really nice that's really nice having uh, these women were g almost having be becoming hypothermic because of the cold showers and and everything that they were trying to uh, make the suffering upon the se the self to become enlightened and he just tortured these people he became uh, in a compound he, he created a compound he created a cult and then they're like oh my god we are in a cult and he's like you got me here and they forced him to apologize i think yeah. like generally speaking with people who create cults they have to have to put in quite a lot of energy into like doing all that and i think like for someone who does that they probably still do have a pretty strong sense of of being me of I wanting know. to do stuff. So he, I, I would disagree. I, I mean, because if, if you're a narcissist, I mean, if, if you're a narcissist, there's so much drive there. Like, if, you know, if yeah. you're awake and a narcissist, there's still going to be the drive. I mean, they, they go. I don't know, because, like, with a narcissist, narcissists really create validation and all that stuff. Well, okay. In, in, in that case, like, where there's sadism, well, that, that's more psychopathic, isn't it? Like, but I, still, I don't know, but uh, this, this example is just puzzling me that he was uh, recognized as enlightened whoever and then people followed him without questioning them. Obviously they had the belief of I am not enough and it created mm -hmm. a cult and mm -hmm. he did and he should point this out. It was his responsibility. But you I mean you you might be you might be right. But, but <laughs> you, you could be right. I, I've always wondered about that. But, you know, I, I think it also, then it makes, it creates non, you know, like awakeness as a kind of ideal in a way. Yeah. Like, okay, if you're awake, you're not capable of doing, of being a sadist because, you know, you get a sadist and you prevent them from causing pain to people. They, they suffer. <laughs> I mean, these, these guys, I, you know, I, you know what, I'm, what I'm about to say might not even be true, but like from I guess what I, I think uh -huh. is like if, if that sense of me kind of drops, then there's a real full um, appreciation of the simplicity and the fullness of this, that you wouldn't really need to do that. I might be wrong, but mm -hmm. that's just what I think. Well, then, uh, I, <laughs> I suspect that it might happen anyway. That your ve that your very nature of being there might attract in other people, and they build the structure around you in initially, and then you just kind of go with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you go well, actually, yeah, it's kind of fun. It serves yeah. the people, and and it. Uh, I do believe that there's a, a large part in all of these stories that end up going to that conclusion that. The people around actually kind of build the bonfire. But, but, yeah. but what happens depends on what kind of person you are. Absolutely. I mean, you, you, know, you, you have to participate that, either by your action or, or by your inaction. Hmm. Um, it could turn you into still, a narcissist. Like, yeah, it's, you, I mean, you, you don't have to. I think you, if you're a narcissist, you probably have a pretty strong sense of self, but I might be wrong. But, but there's no other. Yeah, it's just, there's an, there's just self. I mean, that's, that's, that's all there is in a kind of limited sense because everybody's part of them. It's a kind of weird one. This yeah. <laughs> like, but it's like, because you're, you're all instrumental to, to me. You serve me if I'm the narcissist. Like, otherwise, fuck off. You're not doing, you're not acting right. You're, that why are you acting that's strange? Still, you're that's not. still in the, in the sense that there is an other, though, I think. Yeah, but it wouldn't be done in that way. It's probably a mechanism that just plays out. I mean, why wouldn't, if, if power's the only thing, because it's been, they've been crushed as a kid, so power's the only thing that they've got because they're never going to allow themselves to be threatened for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a decision that's being made. No one can hurt me. And it's, so there's actually no self there in a real sense. No, there's no ego. So they, they absorb the characters of other people around them. No harm. Yeah, isn't, no isn't that echoism though? More like, 
echoism, well, the echo is, was, isn't that the, the it's doormat? Like the or the, it's the opposite of narcissism. Well, that is kind of inverted narcissism. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you kind of get off with, oh, I'm so special because the narcissist loves me. <laughs> it's kind of, but, um, oh, yeah, really? but they're as dangerous. The, the doormat's as dangerous as a narcissist because they, they will serve and they will forget, they forget. Well, they play into, they can play into evil. I mean, they can become part of it. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, I think, well, at least from what I read anyway, like, echoism is like when someone um, someone identifies or tries not to be a narcissist is one, one part of it uh, which can also make them quite exploitable uh, because they're not serving themselves a lot of the time I think it's probably something that oh yeah oh, that makes sense yeah yeah and uh, yeah uh, I think like in, in the experience here though like there's probably the echoism going on, but maybe there's narcissism going on as well, uh, too. Uh, um, what, with you? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, no. It's probably not very... <laughs> no, but like, no, no, but I think like there's a period in, in the story of my life when like I really did not want to be a narcissist um, and that itself was a sense of self, like mm -hmm. yeah, I would get, I'd get Pretty, pretty messed over, like, because of it. Um, oh, scared of being entitled at all? Like, where, yeah. where, where, where's it okay? Yeah, okay. Probably. I don't think that negates being right, though. I mean, some some people no, just... I, it's, it's just unconscious stuff. I mean, it can be unconscious. It's not even... If it was conscious, it... I don't think true narcissists worry about whether they're narcissists or not. Yeah. But, but, but I think, like, well, I don't know, from my psychological understandings and all that reading and stuff I've done um, like and maybe you can confirm or refute me but like is it's not like if you compare like a narcissist and a psychopath right so it's like a psychopath like something that's like hardwired and like a narcissist is like learned is that what it is it's yeah well it's I mean it's but it's very very scale. early it's it's there is a scale yeah, it's a, it's a spectrum, yeah. so it's a level of degree. Uh -huh. But MPD is the full shebang, like a non-negotiable, can't be changed, it, impenetrable, like mm. you can't... But I, I, I imagine a lot of it is... So MPD, so MPD is like, so like, you know, you've got loads of people, different degrees of narcissism, right? And you got people who are major, like NPD personality disorder narcissists, uh -huh. right? But then you have maybe someone who's like, I guess you have also like different levels of psych psychopathy in people as well. And like, you could have someone with a psychological, uh, um, psychopathical person or whatever you call it. Mm. So is they're slightly different because they don't care about power so much. So if they were setting up a cult, they want the sex or the money. The psychopath. Yeah, mm -hmm. they they don't really care about people thinking, oh wow, you know. It's more of a sociopath, isn't it? Well, well, sociopath is a second rate. Psychopath are just a little bit more jittery, and they tend to have less ch impulse control, so they'll go for they choose quick well, fixes. Mm -hmm. They'll do a little bank job. They can't do bank job thing, or like they'll nick something in the shop and get done for it yeah. rather than playing. They'll get more game. done for it. <laughs> yes. Just be like, I want that. I want that chocolate bar now. And nick something. I don't know. But small stuff. But they, they're very emotionally unstable, can't have relationships generally. And whereas the psychopath could be married for years and be a loving husband <laughs> and have bodies oh, in the what? garden or something. <laughs> like, I don't know, whatever, for even to the tarmac. Yeah. But, but yeah, and then, then there's the dark triad, because that's the sadism you were talking about in the, the Cohen thing. Well, it's sadism, getting off in pain, and Machiavellianism, and sociopathy. They, and there's a lot, yeah, but, but I don't know. I mean, I, I think there's probably a, a lot of it. With, but I, I think if you talk about cults, it obscures speakers. <laughs> like, so like the speakers are all not narcissistic or not <coughs> psychopaths. Um, you know, can just as likely be the speakers as well, just because they haven't, you know, maybe because they haven't set up a cult. 
maybe they're too bourgeois, you know, maybe they're just, I don't know, or they're, you know, it's just not something they would do, or... Well, I, I like this idea of not being able to humour the question about when it started. For me, it's like, um, if you go that hard, it's like everything, even uttering a word is a violation. And I feel like the magic is really that things do seem to be happening, despite this, under, this overwhelming sense that nothing's happening. So we always, in the illusion, have to arbitrarily choose a threshold for something is happening or not, despite this sort of sense that, or this, this recognition that nothing's really happening. Yeah. So, so I really want to push you for an answer. <laughs> back to you. Just when did when did you arbitrarily, or maybe you really don't want to arbitrarily, but if you were to define a threshold within the illusion as to before and after, could you do that? Are you willing to do that? Yeah, I'm willing. Back again. I mean, it's not free will. So uh, no, yeah. that, that's, that's a shit joke. <laughs> I get what you're saying, but it's really, I feel like it's a trap on some level to be so... Because it's from the mind. You try to use the mind. You're never going to get the answer. You oh, you, me? Yeah. Oh. You well, but the mind provides answers because yeah, you it can... You can just entertain the conversation, it's interesting, yeah. Also, to arbitrarily define a threshold is a miracle. Because how could anything... Everything is a miracle. Yeah, so why not enjoy it? Especially when you have less thoughts, then you start seeing it. Well, I'll well, be quiet. Well, I don't know, in my experience, well, so radical non duality, that's that, but then behind the scenes, when you get radical non duality speakers, <laughs> let's talk about when it happened. Like, I mean, the only oh, yeah, you know, yeah. like I mean, it's <laughs> it it is. I I get I get the kind of purity of it, and you know, okay, so some like say frustrates the ego or whatever as well. Like, you know, I mean, some people that are, are to speak in that way. I'm I'm not denying that, and it works. I think that Jim Newman and all they're very good, very good at delivering that. Like, you know. So it's not a threat though to talk about it. Like, it doesn't stop you from. Well, nothing happened, so. It's irrelevant, really. Yeah, but then everything is on that level. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and yet something in the illusion seems to be happening, and that comes. It's just fun, really. It's just fun to talk.